When we are uncomfortable or anything unpleasant happens, we look to take refuge in something. Usually we turn to food, alcohol, sex, drugs, money, power, or relationships. But none of these things gives us the lasting protection or satisfaction we're looking for. When you understand you can't find lasting happiness in samsara, then the desire to find true refuge becomes strong. In Buddhism, we take refuge in the three jewels, the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. The Buddha is like the doctor who understands your disease and knows how to treat it. The Dharma, his teachings, is the medicine he prescribes, and the Sangha is the spiritual community that helps you to take the medicine. To take refuge is to finally seek protection from suffering in a way that can really help you. When we think about the ultimate nature of reality and what causes us to suffer, this is the true meaning of refuge. Before listening to these or any teachings, it's essential to prepare one's heart and mind in the appropriate way, to set one's attitude in the highest intention to be able to benefit all living beings. Now, you're about to listen to teachings on taking refuge in the three jewels, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. And this motivation, in and of itself, is taking refuge is taking refuge in the path to enlightenment. So in order to gain the most from listening to these teachings, right now, generate in your mind strongly the determination to be able to achieve enlightenment as quickly as possible in order to be of the highest benefit to each and every suffering living being. We may think that taking refuge is just a Buddhist thing, a Buddhist topic, uh, but actually we've been doing it all our life. We, we always try to take some kind of refuge, go for refuge, when, when we notice that we are suffering. And of course, when we were very young, uh, the first refuge we had was our mother. Whenever something went wrong, we went running to our mother and she was quite a wonderful refuge as a child, seemed to solve all our problems for us, or most of them. Yeah. But as we grew older, then we, we found that maybe our mother couldn't solve all our problems, so we discovered or had to find other refuges. And these were our friends, the friends we found, and, and then we as we grow older, we look for other refuges, particularly uh, our wealth. We think, we all believe, most of us, most of the time, that money will be able to um, protect us from suffering and bring happiness. So we find a refuge in money, especially in our society now. This is the main refuge. It used to be religion, some kind of religion. Now it's money or power. We take refuge in drugs, socially accepted drugs like alcohol. These are all types of refuge. We go to them thinking, hoping, believing that they will pr afford some kind of protection, so somehow will bring an end to the suffering. Yeah? Also food. This is a very popular form of refuge. <laughs> Sex, 
everything we do, actually, is some kind of refuge from suffering and also at the same time we hope not only will it stop the suffering but bring happiness. But we discover with experience that all these different things that we've relied on as some kind of refuge are not a complete refuge. They don't completely solve our problems. They don't bring an end to our suffering completely. And if we and maybe some of us come to uh, the Buddha Dharma because we've discovered that the things we've relied on in the past to to overcome our suffering and bring some happiness, not one of them really works. And even all of them together, all of these ordinary forms of refuge, even all of them combined, don't work. They don't really stop our suffering, and especially the causes of our suffering. What we need to take refuge in is something perfect, unbetrayable, pure mind, free of all faults, possessing all qualities. And that is the definition of Buddha mind, enlightened mind. Only that is unbetrayable, something that we can completely rely on and can, can give every solution. Because one of the, of also one of the good qualities of enlightened mind is that it is omniscient, knowing everything, so therefore can't make mistakes. So, um, when we recognize that we have suffering and the causes of it, we also recognize that uh, this all arises because of ignorance. The, the wrong view of self that we have, um, the wrong view of, uh, that we have of all, the way all phenomena exist. So this poison in our mind, this d d afflicted thought of, of ignorance is like the worst possible disease that we could have. It's the worst disease because it gives rise to every other disease. The only reason we experience sickness and death is because of karma. And karma is created because of delusions and delusions depend on the presence of ignorance. If we really recognize that, we have to find someone who is the perfect doctor. And that perfect doctor is the Buddha. Because that Buddha that that perfect doctor of the Buddha has themselves freed themselves of every disease. They know every disease and the cure for every disease. They've cured themselves of every disease. And they know how to cure us. And the medicine, the perfect medicine, is the teachings, the Dharma. And uh, the Arya Sangha, meaning the ordained followers of the Buddha who have practiced intensively and gained a direct insight into the nature of themselves and phenomena. The, the Sangha are like the nurses who, who help us take the medicine, tell us when, remind us when to take it, how to take it, in what dosage, and so on. And they inspire us to do so. As an ordinary worldly person, we are always seeking happiness in the external world, out there. And all our suffering and problems, we put the blame on that, on something out there, someone out there. But when we take refuge, or when we do refuge, we become an inner being, we make this conscious recognition that the source of my suffering is not out there, it's hidden with, within me. When we first take refuge, that's what we recognize. The moment we start to recognize for ourselves and understand that the real cause of my suffering is not out there, but it's in, inside, and that the real cause of happiness is not out there, but within me, as soon as we have really understood that at some level, then we have refuge. We become an inner being. We realize that everything, good and bad, is in us. And we have to work from within, cultivating 
the garden of our mind. When we become an inner being, we become a practitioner of the law of cause and effect. We see that that is the key to everything. So as uh, in conventional uh, uh, expression, we say that if there is a threat, seek a refuge somewhere. So similarly, in the context of spiritual practice, you know, the, to, to protect oneself from the threat of um, unfortunate or unfavorable rebirth, one needs to seek refuge in the three jewels. So when we speak about um, taking refuge in the context of um, Buddhism, we must understand that actually there are different levels of refuge and different types of refuge. For example, the highest form of refuge would be that of a Mahayana practitioner, where um, the, the, the refuge that you are seeking from is the thread of being caught in the extremes of uh, samsaric existence on the one hand and uh, isolated nirvana, solitary nirvana on the other. So, so to, to be protected from these two extremes of um, uh, samsaric existence and peace, uh, you seek the, the, the attainment of Buddhahood, that is the embodiment of Dharmakaya, the Buddha body of reality, and Rupakaya, the Buddha body of perfect form. And uh, not only that, but also you, you, you seek such an enlightened state for the benefit of all sentient beings, uh, and this kind of um, um, taking, going for refuge to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha is that of the Mahayana practitioner. And also, the refuge that you are seeking from is uh, um, um, much uh, more comprehensive. Um, so then, we can also recognize a second level of uh, going for refuge, where the protection that is being sought from, the refuge that is being sought from, is the, um, the suffering of conditioning, the pervasive conditioning, and also the suffering of being caught in a cyclic existence, and, um, and, and also uh, your fear of the destructive power of all the negative emotions and thoughts. And in order to seek refuge from that, you go for refuge to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and, and which embodies the, the total transcendence of uh, secular existence and, and uh, the sufferings, particularly the suffering of conditioning. And then there is also, again, a third um, a level of, uh, third kind of um, taking refuge, where the, the spiritual aspirant is seeking refuge only from a sort of an immediate threat, which is the threat of being reborn in the lower realms of existence and having a tremendous sense of fear for that possibility and then seeking refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha to provide protection from that. And here, um, so when we talk about this kind of refuge, the, the, the threat that we are uh, seeking refuge from is the possibility of suffering in the lower realms of existence. So when we think about lower realms of existence, we should not think of a place so far away in the distant future, this is not really uh, the case because what divides us uh, from the present moment and such a possibility of next life in a lower realms of existence is simply the continuation, continuity of this breath that we all inhale and exhale. The moment that ceases, the next life is right there in front of you.
So we go for refuge to Dharma. When we go for refuge to Dharma, we go for refuge to Buddha, you know, who taught the Dharma. We go for refuge to Sangha, who are the helpers. So the wish to practice Dharma leads to the practice of going for refuge. Yeah? And the first advice, you know, from the Buddhas when we go for refuge is to observe our karma. Be mindful of our actions. So we don't create negative actions to be born in the lower realms of existence. You know, our mind is the cause of suffering and happiness. It, it arises out of our mind. So it's much more important to protect our mind than to protect our body. It's much more important to protect a positive you know, state of mind than to protect our possessions, our body, and external things. Yeah? But we have a habit of thinking they are more important than our mind. So we trash our mind and we protect our body. We have to learn how to accept trashing our body to protect our mind. You know? Mm. Because it's with anger and hatred and aggression that we destroy our happiness. So my purpose is not to harm others. You know, you think my purpose is to practice Dharma, to extend kindness, compassion to others, so that you generate a state of refuge in your mind. And remember, oh yes, ultimate purpose of my life is, you know, uh, to awaken my mind to benefit others. And for this I rely on Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. So we say we need these three jewels. They are jewels uh, because they help us overcome our problems and put us on a safe and sound direction in life. But the purpose of going for refuge to Buddha, Dharma, Sangha externally is to develop those qualities within ourselves. You can have different meanings of refuge because there's a kind of inner refuge and there's an outer refuge. When we say we go for refuge, we can also say, I, you know, I take refuge in my own wisdom. Yeah? But since our wisdom is limited and we need to develop our wisdom, we have to rely on beings with greater wisdom than ourselves. So that's why we rely on Buddha, you know, who teaches perfect wisdom. So we go for refuge to Buddha, that's external refuge to develop our own inner refuge. You know? And then we go for refuge to Dharma, which is the wisdom itself, in the mind of Buddha. Yeah? Uh, and yeah, in the mind of Buddha, that perfect wisdom understanding, relative and ultimate truth, understanding the law, cause and effect. You know? And so we go for refuge to that wisdom to, uh, you know, to gain perfect wisdom ourselves. That's the Dharma. And then we go for refuge to Sangha, because Sanghas are the helpers on the path, you know. They say that this state of refuge, you know, generating a state of refuge and compassion completely stops lower rebirth. It is impossible to take a lower rebirth when your state of mind is focused on refuge and compassion. It blocks. So that's the best state of mind for us ordinary people to die in, to actually be in a state of mind of refuge. Bodhicitta, compassion.
in the past, I often look to drugs a good amount for taking refuge, um, whether smoking pot or uh, whatever various drugs I was doing, or alcohol. Um, <coughs> the teachings say that it's harmful to do activities like that. And to my mind at the time, um, that wasn't so appealing, I guess I would say. Like, I just wanted to keep doing that, going out and having fun with my boyfriend and taking drugs or getting drunk or whatever. <coughs> um, but more and more I started thinking about the teachings they were giving me and um, that taking refuge in external things like that can't bring any kind of lasting happiness. I started to find that not only were the experiences I had on drugs and alcohol um, not so fun anymore and um, were actually more of a suffering experience <coughs> and brought even more confusion to my mind. Um, I found that the more I took refuge in doing my practices every day and to going to teachings instead of to parties and to get drugs and to um, voluntarily trying to quiet my mind that the teachings were working and that I was finding more stability inside, more peace, more ability to work better at my job. And I think the coolest thing about refuge um, as I've gone on is that the more I wholeheartedly give myself to refuge and have faith in it, really cool things have started to happen in terms of things that I've always really wanted have actually been able to happen. The kind of people I've wanted to be around show up. Really amazing teachers keep coming into my life. If there's a teaching I've been wanting, it will, it will almost drop into my lap. <coughs> By and large, I'm a happier person than I was without refuge. And it's my inner experience of having taken refuge that, that I've seen a change in my mind. I don't even need to check with anybody outside to see if they've seen a change in me or if refuge has made me a better person because I've experienced it. When people ask me if refuge has made a difference, it's 100% yes, if not more. <coughs> 